Hey everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. Uh, actually had to leave and go run an errand. Uh, leaving the office to go run an errand. There's always something going on with the kids. Uh, so I decided uh, to go ahead and shoot this video. I was going to do a live and I may still extend it because it's something that really needs to be talked about. It's one of those elephants in the room. Uh, before I do get into it, I want to remind you uh, that we're in the middle of a fundraiser uh, specifically focused on Black Men Lead, uh, Rite of Passage Initiative, working with young black boys. Uh, we're trying to guide them into being strong black men uh, who can create safe and functional environments for our elderly, our women, and our children. Um, the information for you to give is inside of the description box. Now, there is a story floating around the internet and one, one part of it is absolutely disturbing and appalling to me. The other part is extremely disappointing that it isn't getting uh, the attention that it needs or uh, that it should be getting, not in the form of sensationalism and uh, viral effect, but in the form of people being forced to see the need for change and what that looks like. Um, there's a story of a young 18 year old girl who married her somewhere around 60 year old godfather slash stepfather or stepfather slash godfather however you want uh, to categorize it but basically this guy at one point was in a relationship with her mother somehow became her godfather father's absent mother's a uh, cycling addict uh, addict uh, so she's constantly you know in and out of addiction and is completely uh, dysfunctional and these two got married. They have been uh, dating, and I think that's a dysfunctional term, especially when talking about this particular situation. Uh, but they had been in a relationship prior to that because they have a kid um, already. As soon as she turned 18, she married him. But there's a kid. So this man was having a romantic relationship with an underage child. That's the first thing, but it, it, it's darker than that. That's a sickness and that there's an inexcusable behavior in that alone. That alone qualifies him for extermination because that the prevalence of childhood sexual abuse in the black home is extraordinary and when we talk about our young black girls it's absolutely unbelievable and here we have someone who by all stretches of imagination is charged with the responsibility of protecting her and making sure that she's safe and he exploited that situation and that, that position and took on a very selfish role uh, and pretty much messed this girl up. And she's so emotionally and mentally confused that she's defending it with a ferociousness that's quite scary. What you expect from people who've been groomed uh, to move into those type roles. They see the person who has groomed them as the person who loves them, as the person who has their best interests at heart and everyone else is the enemy. And that in and of itself, like I said, is horrible. This person should have been the one protecting her. This person should have been the one holding her down and making sure that she had a life and a future despite all of the hardships she had 
been birthed into. She was birthed into dysfunction, first of all. So we're dealing with a bunch of elephants in the room. We're dealing with uh, mental health in the black community. That's in that room. We're dealing with addiction in the black community. That's in that room. We're dealing with childhood sexual abuse and exploitation. That's in that room. We're dealing with adverse childhood experiences and the lifelong repercussions of, 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 of those ACEs. That's in that room. And we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to dig it up because the vast majority of us has someone in their family who's experienced childhood sexual abuse or who is a predator. We know somebody who the family didn't trust, the kids around. And yet that person was still a part of the family. That person was still allowed to roam free. That person was in many instances protected with greater uh, intensity than the children they exploited. We know, and with me having dealt with this, with me literally working with hundreds upon hundreds of women and some males, we know for a fact that there is a tendency to ostracize the victim when the victim decides to no longer be the victim and decides to out the whole situation. They become the black sheep. They become the enemy. They become uh, the person uh, under scrutiny. They are attacked. And you see this over and over again. Uh, they are told they are destroying the family. They, they are told that they are are, are, are causing the problem. They are told that they were too fast and they were too promiscuous. I'm still trying to figure out how five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve year olds are fast. Uh, I'm trying to figure out even with 15, 16 year olds that may be in, in, in the midst of discovering themselves how that should excite a grown ass man and then it, it still fall on the head of the child. I'm trying to understand as a person who has reared the seeds of other men. I don't classify myself as a stepfather. I tell I tell anybody that 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 that, that emphasizes that word step towards someone who is really active. No, if you want to apply step, apply to the person that stepped out. Now, if you want to apply to me, you can say I stepped up. But at the end of the day, I don't even classify my kids as biological or step. They're my kids. But in this, for the sake of this conversation, I don't see my stepdaughters any differently than I see my biological daughters. They're my job to protect. And, 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 and when they get to that age where they start to feel themselves, I'm the guy that reels them back in. Hold on, check it. No, nope, you're not wearing that. No, nope, you're not going out in that. No, nope, you're not doing that. So for me to sit up and think that there's something about a female uh, who's 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, whatever, that's stimulating a 50-year-old man, my question is, what's wrong with the guy? What kind of relationship can you probably have with somebody? What kind of shared experiences do you have? What kind of passions to build? That's solely a physical situation that solely reeks of dysfunction and brokenness and a lack of healing on everybody's part involved. And that is too freaking common. That's, that's like my biggest complaint with it all. This is not an aberration. This is not an anomaly. This is an ongoing plague. It's too big for us to sit around and keep pretending that it's not happening because we don't want to confront it. A lot of us don't want to confront it because when the things start falling out of the closet, we're going to have to admit that we were victims too. Some of us don't want to admit it because we don't want to be at odds with mama. We don't want to be at odds with daddy and grandma. We're going to have to confront this. We're literally destroying generations because we are letting toxicity flow through the veins of our family lines. And now it's time to do something about it. I can't tell you the magnitude of the psychological damage that's done to this baby at 18. Then she's got babies. 
that are going to literally breathe in and function in this toxicity and be expected to be normal, functional, productive citizens in a country in which they are already inherently under the gun. We owe our youth much better than they're getting. The idea that we can sit up and say, well, it's not my family, it's not my, that can't go. This is a tribe, this is a village. This is a social uh, reality. We don't live in individualized pods in this world. We live in social enclaves, social constructs, social, and we are classified in social groups. And how that group performs is going to have an impact on everybody within it. How each individual person uh, performs inside of that spec that social spectrum is going to have an impact on every everyone within it. There's too much information, too much data, too much experience, too much history for us not to know what's happening around us is impacting us you cannot sit up and think that it does not it doesn't really start to come home to many until your daughter comes home from college and she's been date raped until your daughter comes home from college and she's been beaten by her boyfriend until some clown who was was ignored and and mishandled and not properly socialized and everything else kills your son behind something stupid and then all of a sudden now it's the monster it's the monster well the monster was created it wasn't born and the problem is we don't want to deal with the problems we want to complain about the situations never going to get anything done that way it's time for us to confront a bunch of these elephants in the room. It's time for us to make a stand. It's that simple. Look, I'm almost to the point where I'm about to make this first stop on these errands, and I'm gonna get off of here. I'm not nearly done with this, but I had to touch on it because it's just like really weighing on my heart. We've got work to do. We've got a lot of work to do. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.